Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of Crit Hit Reviews, with your host, Arlian. On today's episode, I'll be talking about the review copy I received of Red Blue Games' Zelda-flavored roguelite, Sparklight. Find out if I felt it was an illuminating experience, or a shockingly bad time. Also find out if I avoid doubling up on lights throughout the entire review. Bam, bam. Sparklight follows the story of a young engineer, Ada, and her airsh- No, wait. The airship crashes. Rather, it follows her journey to save the world of Geodia, which has recently found itself subject to catastrophic disturbances, courtesy of rampant capitalism and environmental neglect. Factually, I mean, the orchestrator of the disaster is a solitary mogul, the Baron, rather than soulless multinational corporations, and it's for literal power instead of figurative, but I didn't really have to reach too far for this one. Yeah. Anyways, as far as it goes, I enjoyed working my way through its narrative. While not the most profound bits of storytelling around, it did have some decent moments of drama to stumble into as you progressed, though I'll admit that overall the characters did end up feeling a bit shallow, Still, it wasn't anything that really worked to the detriment of the game. It just wasn't engrossing. But, let's move on to how it tackles the whole action-adventure deal. The game's introduction is straightforward enough, as not even seconds pass before you're thrust into tutorial-tastic combat. To learn the basics of wrenching enemies in the face, hammering heavy attacks, and your nifty dash. The latter of which is not only actually used for evasions, but also plays prominently in platforming segments. And that's about that, really, before you're cut loose to roam the surface of the world. Okay, I mean, you are also introduced to widgets, which serve as consumable items like grenades, portable health packs, and buffs. But the important takeaway from the tutorial is you also get introduced to a boss! who then proceeds to completely obliterate you in a boss battle you're doomed to fail. Mind you, the boss flexing on your poor underpowered ass does serve a purpose, as not only just provide an excuse for you to be dragged over to the game's hub area where the narrative can be advanced, it also introduces you to the rogue light elements of the game. See, as you smack things and open chests, you acquire Sparklight, the game's currency which you can spend to unlock facilities which provide nifty benefits like a selection of widgets to start a run with, or a schematic workshop where you can build tools. More, more on that later. You can also spend them on patches, which are items which are acquirable from a shop in town, as well as one-time chests scattered throughout the world. Now, these are important because they can be stuck into your patch board, which essentially serves as a customizable stat sheet where you do things like increase the damage you can take, get more health, up your deeps, as well as just unique elements like increasing the range of your attacks, preemptively mapping out a biome, or marking down where notable elements are on said map. And those latter bits can end up feeling fairly important since the world as a whole is mutable due to the instability caused by plot a fact you'll be reminded of whenever you quit or get the nine shades of heck beaten out of your sorry ass, as the next time you take the plunge, you'll find that everything is arranged differently. And this isn't just a matter of the tiles simply being shuffled in place, as there's actually a fairly decent amount of variation in the tiles that can crop up in the various biomes. To the point that it can take veritable hours to see all the iterations of rooms that can be explored or chests that can be opened for any one area. That said, there are certain constants in the world. For instance, there's always the central mining operation where the boss of each biome lurks. I mean, these aren't redoable, but they do provide some fun and decently challenging encounters for players to butt their heads against and are central to advancing onto the next segment of the game. So they provide abilities for your robuddy companion, who's essentially a multi-purpose tool meant for solving certain puzzles. Well, puzzle solving and collecting loot, which is honestly a little bit depressing, since while the game does feature co-op, what that translates into is pushing bot duty onto a second player while giving combat and platforming to player one. Oof. 
In any case, the bosses aren't the only constants in the world, as there's also a number of optional odds and ends that you can hunt down to just advance yourself, such as the gadget temples, which task players with clearing puzzles tied to a specific gadget, and garner you the ability to unlock the schematic of said item at the end. Which is pretty darn worthwhile, since they can broaden your combat repertoire with items like energy crossbows, remote guided mini nuke dirigibles, as well as providing you the tools to better navigate the world and solve puzzles. We're talking such RPG staples as the ability to swim across deep water, or using remote guided mini nuke dirigibles. Ahem. That said, there's also the foundries, which serve as sort of mini dungeons pitting you against a combination of platforming segments and combat challenges in sequence, ultimately accumulating in a large chest which can provide a unique patch as well as some more generic options in subsequent runs. These can be exhausted so they'll only provide sparklight instead, but that's still pretty useful for resource grinding. Admittedly, there's a few other quests you can engage in as well, which mostly tie to finding NPCs, though there is a rather on-the-nose example of the Monty Hall puzzle that you can dabble in. The point is, however, the game doesn't make it overly hard to accrue strength. Enough so, in fact, that it actually felt fairly safe to say that the overall difficulty of the game is customizable. And that's because the sheer amount of patches that you can jam into an upgraded patch board, especially if you've upgraded those patches, allows you to become so strong that anything that might even resemble difficulty or challenge becomes laughable at best. Which, uh, yes, is part of why I ended up with such a haphazard play style. Whoops. Now, the music and the overall sound design in Sparklight is pretty fun to the point it legitimately motivated me enough to keep poking around in search of the beats. Mostly so I could hear the final variant of the song, it's definitely enjoyable to listen to. And now, when it comes to the visual department, well, when I picked up Sparklight, I got a sense of nostalgia for A Link to the Past. Not because it took anything directly from those games, but because it managed to do a decent job of invoking that same sort of feeling from its environments and animations. And then I read the credits and found out it was actually inspired by Zelda and Binding of Isaac and felt like an idiot for not catching on earlier. It's a pretty game to look at overall, and I really enjoy the visuals it provides. So, alright, finale time. First off, I'd like to say that overall I had a lot of fun playing the game. Diving into it blindly, I found it could be pretty challenging with a fair amount of discovery being involved in how to navigate its puzzles and boss fights. Also in how to bypass certain puzzles before I got the upgrades the game wanted me to have, but I do what I want. I also had a lot of fun messing around discovering the optional puzzle caverns and rooms that were scattered throughout the game, as well as the quests. Even if some of the latter started to get a busy work feel from devolving into find a person and talk to them. That said, as I progressed through the game, I saw the overall difficulty simply drop off the face of the earth, really, if only due to the armor patches. While they take up an absolutely minute portion of your patch board, each one monumentally increases your survivability, to the point that two have you shrugging off almost everything in the game, and three has you no-selling even the last boss. And honestly... I can't even fault the game for this, as it certainly does provide a degree of flexibility and accessibility to even casual players. But it also meant that to maintain any semblance of difficulty requires a player to actively ignore the tools provided to them. To be fair, this is because I went out of my way to go and do all the light bits of puzzle work scattered throughout the game, even if it took an exponentially longer amount of time to find elements that were as of yet unsolved as I roamed. I really would have liked to means to narrow down discovering unsolved tiles or undiscovered beats instead of obsessively resetting the world. That gripe aside, it's a fun game. It might not be a masterful narrative, but it was fun to unearth the story one chunk at a time and I was fond of the aesthetic and the music, which is why it ultimately placed the game as a hit. I think it does a decent job of tackling the adventure genre and the implementation of roguelike elements did keep things fresh and had me discovering new things all the way till the end. Anywho, thanks for tuning in, folks. If you agree, disagree, or just have something to say to me, feel free to comment. And for those interested in more indie reviews, developer interviews, podcasts, or Monday TTRPG content, 
hit the subscribe button and the bell so you know when there's a new release. There's also a Discord. You can click the link in the banner or the description so you can become part of our community, the Crit Hit Cauldron. Lastly, if you'd like to help support the channel, we do have a coffee running now to help supplement funds for a lovely editor, get some coffee, and, you know, make sure we can continue to provide quality content. Again, check the description and the banner for them links. Ultimately, if you folks think that a Patreon would be better, feel free to let me know in the comments. It's something that I've been mulling over, especially in talking with our new editor, Rand. And, yeah, feedback on that would be appreciated. That all said, I'll catch you on the next episode of Crit Hit. Take care till then, folks.